Hi guys, so this is the Guayque Cloud Pro. As far as I can work out, nobody can pronounce that name. I've seen it G Wike, Guayque, G Machine. But this arrived today. I seem to be turning to something of the Laser King. People are sending me lasers. It goes through kind of patches, really. At the moment, we're getting lasers. So we've done um, some really basic machines, which would be home starter machines for coasters, that kind of thing. We've done some um, pretty nice diode lasers, a top of the range diode laser, but lasers and cutting lasers of course are in fierce and competition. And that's because the desktop laser cutter market was worth something like 3.3 billion dollars in 2020 and it's expected to get to about 6.6 .6 billion this year. That's a lot of money! No wonder there's a hell of a lot of competition. Now the market's growing at about 6% per annum and there's a number of factors why that's so. The ideal for setting up a, per, a, a small personal business. They don't actually cost that much to get in when you think about it. And certainly if you're thinking about the amount of capital you spend on any other business, there's been a huge growth in personalization of things. You know, you buy some champagne flutes for a wedding and if you can get the people's name and maybe a photograph on it, suddenly it becomes personal. So there's been this huge growth in that personalization market. Then there's the usual stuff, the merchandising and advertising and the swag, you know, company logos on pens, that sort of thing. But there's just this enormous growth in that particular market, which was actually consolidated under COVID. It became, uh, it really took off during COVID times when people were looking for doing all alternative things and it's led to this incredible growth of these things and the competition in that marketplace. So when you're thinking about one of these you're really thinking about bang for buck and these things the uh, pro version comes in at about 3200 US there is a burst basic version at 2800 and really if you're going to compare it I suppose the one you could compare it with would be Glowforge the Glowforge Pro is about £6,000, that's pounds. So the Glowforge Pro is about twice the price of this thing. They do do a basic version, but again, that's more like £3,000. So the big question is, how does this stack up against Glowforge? Now, you've got to think about Glowforge. Glowforge came out, I think it was 2016, 2017, as a Kickstarter campaign, and it broke all records. It was something like 27 million or something like that raised on that Kickstarter campaign. And it has become something of the yardstick to which these things are measured. This is obviously a Chinese product, but Glyke are in fact an industrial manufacturer. They make industrial lasers. They've come from a background of industrial lasers to a desktop version, obviously because of market demands. Whereas Glowforge started the other way around. They did a Kickstarter campaign where they launched that product. So you might want to say that Goike have come from knowing lasers into the business, whereas Glowforge has come from knowing business into okay, lasers. Okay, let's have a bit of a better look at the inside of the machine. Now, it's an all-metal construction, and of course, it's got this big white button. All of these seem to have a big white button, because who wouldn't want to press something like that? That came out with Glowforge and seems to become um, really the standard for these things. Everybody's got one. This one has an emergency on-off button and this work area, actually there's six and two threes. It's slightly bigger than Glowforge, but yeah, only about half an inch either way. Here is the laser itself and of course it's on stepper motors and linear rails. The cylinder is contained in there, which I really like because it gives you a lot of protection. The Glowforge has just got a couple of clips on it. So really nice the way they've actually put that together. And Glowforge is a sturdy plastic machine, but let's face it, this is a big lump of metal. So you're going to be able to give that some knocks. Now Glowforge have one thing that's really good. At the bottom of here is an air slot and in that air slot, Glowforge have got a feed in material slot so you can feed in bigger materials. Here, you're only going to be able to use the work area of the bed. It is one of the big pluses of Glowforge. Now these CO2 laser cutters used to come with a water pump and a big bucket of water because you had to keep the laser cool. And these ones, and pretty much all modern ones, and certainly in the Glowforge as well, the cooling system's right there. It's an internal cooling system. Of course, that makes everything so much neater and easier to cope with. Now we take off the drawer front and pull out the rest bed, the honeycomb rest bed. What you'll see here is a well, and that's because this goes with it. This is the rotary tool. It sits in that well, and you can put bottles and glasses and that sort of thing on it. 
comes in, plugs in just behind here in a separate plug right there and then it's got a rotary plate switch there that you flip to actually work the rotary tool. This little pull out front section certainly makes it easier for cleaning. Right here on the glass lid you can actually see the camera which is really quite awesome because it allows you to position your image on your workpiece really accurately. Now they are continually working on upgrading this and this used to come with a separate air filter box. It all comes now with the fan and filter in this inline that goes straight into your outfeed. Glowforge do do an air filter but it is an extra £1,200. This comes as part of the kit. Now I haven't really gone into the setup of it particularly because to be honest it was a breeze and the Guayque's uh, guide video on it is absolutely brilliant. So I didn't feel any need to do that, it really is almost plug and play. It comes with all the extra cables and all the extra little bits of gubbins that you're going to want. It's got an extra little toolbox there with bits and pieces in, but the one that I really liked was this. This is an extra camera cable, because with the camera you're lifting the thing up and down all the time, you're going to be flexing that camera cable and they sent a spare. Okay, in terms of power and speed, they're actually kind of related to each other. The more powerful it is, the more you can, the quicker you can cut with it, get the same depth of cut. Now this thing is a 50 watt laser, the Glowforge obviously is a 45 watt laser, and the 50 watts means the tube has to be slightly bigger, which accounts for the slightly larger footprint. This is reckoned to run at, I think it's 600 millimeters per second is the max speed on it. <laughs> Glowforge don't tell you, they have their own unit. They have their own diddles, so I've got no idea what that unit is, but they start like, uh, go up to about 4,000 or so, start at zero, so it's some kind of speed. I guess we could measure it if we wanted to, but I don't like that actually. I think we should just quote it in millimeters per second like everybody else. Anyway, 600 millimeters per second is fast. Now, one thing about this is it comes with a single camera. And it's supposed to be auto-focusing and auto-depth finding. Well, that's not really true, okay? What it does is, on their samples, you can see there's a Q code for the material. The camera scans the Q code to the material, and that actually set, helps set it. So there's a little bit of guesswork there on the camera. The Glowforge, they use two cameras, and so it has a true auto-focus. This is kind of a simulated auto-focus. Okay, now we're coming to two things I go on endlessly about, and that is the software and the support that you get. Now the software on this thing, it has its own cloud software, hence the name, like a cloud, so does Glowforge. But this thing can actually also link up with Lightburn, so you can run this off the net if you want, you can run it standalone if you want, or you can run it through Lightburn if you want. So there's a lot of uh, flexibility there in running this machine, and one of the biggest bugbears that I've heard about Glowforge is you can only run it online, <laughs> so if you've got an internet connection and that's working, you can do your uh, laser cutting, otherwise you're basically stuffed. That, to me, seems like a real thorny problem, actually. I don't like it, okay? I, I don't like having to work on the internet all the time. I quite like to be able to do it somewhere else. I quite like to be able to use other uh, party software if I want to. I don't like to be tied into one people all the time. I mean, Apple do that all the time with their products, and tying into Apple means you can only use Apple services, because once they get you, they can really charge you for that. So I like flexibility, and this has a great deal more flexibility than the Glowforge, which you can only run through their cloud service on the internet. That, to me, is a big down. The other side of things, of course, is the support. Now, rumour <laughs> has it. Glowforge support is next to useless. It takes you ages to get a reply. There's no telephone number where you can talk to somebody and you have to wait for them to write back to you. So their actual support apparently is rubbish. But they were very successful and lots of people have Glowforge machines. And so there's an enormous community out there. And the community, I'm guessing because they don't get a lot of help, have helped themselves. So the community aspect of the support network on the, on the Glowforge machines is huge. There's an awful lot of stuff there. Uh, Glyke obviously are more industrial. Now they are doing a better job at the actual support from the um, from the company, and their um, support that they have online is really good. Apparently, the support you get for repairs is just plain awesome, and certainly this arrived in a few days. It was very quick delivery, so the company support on this is good, but the community is a little bit smaller, and so you're not finding that there so much. But equally, of course. Because you can run Lightburn on this, you suddenly opened up to the massive Lightburn community. So that's a bit of 
in swings and roundabouts on that one, I feel, in terms of the support available for it. There's one other thing I wanted to mention about Glowforge support, actually. Um, free, you get access to some of it. If you want access to all of it, you have to pay a subscription fee, and I believe it's something like $45 to $50, which sounds a little bit like stiffing your customers to me. Now, we've compared the two machines, that is, this Guayke uh, Cloud Pro, with the Glowforge Pro in terms of um, the price, the company, the build quality, the power, the speed, the camera, the support available, and um, the software. So that's a good list of things to compare the two, and I think that on the whole, it's a little six and two threes. Now actually, there's various things about this that are better than Glowforge, and various things about Glowforge that are better than this. What it comes down to me is how it began this video. It's bang for buck. This, you can't forget, it's half the price of Glowforge. It's half the price to be really splitting your hair to decide between the two of them. Now, give Glowforge their credit. They were the first laser cutter out there on the market. They had a really good job, but to a degree, they're resting on their laurels a bit because, of course, given that size of market, the competition is snapping at their heels, and this is a swift kick between the middle of the legs in terms of price to say look we can make a machine that is pretty much as good as what you're making for half the price of it so if you want bang for buck i would say something like this so far this is a really good machine for the money they're asking from it and i am looking forward to doing some work with this thing anyway i hope you enjoyed that overview thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe